the views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. Uh, thank you for watching this show. I think you're going to find this very interesting in some of this information uh, you, you, you may not know. Uh, and I think it's important for you to know. So the name of the show is Sugar, the New Smoking. Yeah. And I'll teach it to you a little bit later. That's actually sugar in cigarettes. And I'll explain to you why it is. Very few people know that. First, let's go through the history of sugar a little bit. Sugar has been around for thousands of years, for a million years, because plants uh, use sugar for energy. And where do they get the sugar from? From the sun. Yes, the sun hit the chloroplast uh, in, in a leaf and transmit the energy, and, and sugar is uh, produced, and also uh, a few fats, because the fatty acids are related to sugar. That's where the energy uh, uh, comes from. Uh, so uh, it, it's in all plants. You know, I was just thinking, when I took a walk this morning, I see all these leaves of different color, and you know, I think what I'm looking at, <laughs> really, all different kinds of uh, sugar fermenting uh, uh, in the leaves, kind of uh, uh, interesting. So, uh, uh, but the plants use so little sugar, uh, so uh, in uh, years and years and years ago, manufacturers uh, tried to see if they couldn't produce something that would taste good that we could eat, but they were having a heck of a time. Uh, and and, uh, and the main thing they were using was really the honey from bees. Yeah, that, that's what was used throughout uh, Europe, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, and, uh, and then they came to the New World here. You know, Columbus came over here, uh, and there were no bees. Yeah, he, he brought uh, bees over here, uh, and, and, and they obviously uh, uh, reproduced themselves and... and uh, that was a source of sweet. So uh, the, uh, the Indians uh, used maple syrup from the trees. Yeah, that was uh, different. And so they used a limited, only a limited amount. Uh, and they didn't become sick. They didn't develop uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, uh, and then uh, bigger sugar plants, okay, uh, were brought from New Guinea and spread throughout the world. Uh, they went uh, to Africa, uh, to a lot of the Arab countries, uh, and <clears throat> then they could, they could grow uh, the plant. Uh, and the uh, uh, plant had quite a bit of sugar in it, uh, but it had to be processed. And I think it was the Arab world that developed uh, the processing method to refine it. Uh, you had to heat it and, and cool it and heat it and cool it and boil it and, and it, a difficult uh, process. And that's, in other words, they had to refine it. Uh, and eventually uh, it, it spread uh, to, for example, it came through Europe finally and then it went to Britain. And if you look at pictures of the Queen Elizabeth, say in the 1700s, she had blackened teeth. And what did that? Sugar. 
they've known for uh, almost a couple of thousand years uh, that uh, sugar uh, could uh, harm your teeth. That's been known for a long, long time. Uh, but that's been hidden by the industry, and they try to say, well, it didn't affect the teeth, and, and, and that, that was another war to itself. Even myself, I would say, uh, my parents uh, didn't teach me to brush my teeth when I was uh, young, fortunately, I still got them. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, very important, uh, because the sugar can inflame your teeth, you lose the enamel, then the teeth uh, become infected and they fall out. And I also think it's a source of great deal of uh, disease. Uh, so uh, when the bees came to the New World here, the Indians uh, uh, called it uh, the Englishman's fly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They called it the Englishman's fly. And uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, made the comment uh, that the days of slavery uh, were over uh, when they learned to, f to farm the sugar plants uh, ourselves and use, and, and, uh, use the maple trees and the, when the bees were brought over here. Uh, but that frankly didn't happen. Uh, so we get our sugar from sugar cane, from beets, and that's a story in itself, and from corn. Yeah, the they, Japanese discovered an enzyme uh, that they could apply to corn and make fructose corn syrup and, and sucrose. Uh, and uh, that, it, quite a bit, we use today. So uh, uh, the, then we use sugar for energy. Actually, your blood has very little sugar in it, maybe a teaspoonful. Yeah, only a teaspoonful. Yeah. We can live off the fat of our body, which people don't realize. We have actually very little uh, sugar. So uh, over the years, uh, when uh, the sugar, there was so much competition for the production of sugar that the price of sugar went way down. So the sugar industry started forming all kind of associations as far as back as 1930. And we'll go over that uh, some more. Uh, uh, so, and, the, and the people were getting sicker, diabetes rates were going up, uh, people were gaining weight, they were getting fatter. Uh, so there was a lot of fight in the uh, industry. A Dr. Uh, Robert Lustig, a Dr. Robert Lustig, a book I'm gonna hold up for you that I encourage you uh, uh, to read. Uh, he's, he, uh, uh, very famous. He, he also has a great uh, YouTube shows you, you might like to look at. He's a pediatric endocrinologist, an obesity expert, obesity uh, in children. So he has studied this extensively, and I'll be quoting uh, some from that. And what they were teaching years ago was that a calorie is a calorie. In other words, you take a calorie in uh, uh, and uh, and then the calorie comes, leaves your body. That's the first law of thermodynamics. But the problem is what people did not realize, a lot of metabolism occurs in your body. Uh, so some of it is used up in energy, some of it is stored as fat. So it isn't a calorie in, a calorie out. But that's what they try to promote in medicine for years. It was just uh, wrong. Uh, but uh, Dr. Lustig really studied this extensively. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and what he's saying is our food, when you study it chemically, doesn't really match what's going on in your, in your body, okay? So he says oh, being overweight is not a behavioral aberration or a character flaw, okay, or an error of a commission, uh, Children don't choose to be overweight. They are victims of perpetrators. We need to know what drove us into that because we're having a, maybe a third of the children today have diabetes and they're gonna die young. 
and and uh, so he's really studied this. And when this hour is over, you will know uh, what uh, the pr problem is. And and uh, so our, our present thinking is based on correlation, suggestion, conjecture, uh, uh, as uh, even. Uh, La fruta es buena, fruit is good, in Spanish, okay. El yugo es malo, but juice is bad. <laughs> so a lot of this overweight epidemic is because uh, kids are drinking uh, a lot of sodary drinks, uh, and that's about 50% of the cause of being overweight because it has sugar in it especially fructose corn syrup, and kids are gaining weight because they're drinking soda pop. Adults are doing it too. And then the industry finally learned a little bit about that, and the government got involved, and they switched to uh, uh, drinks that had in it uh, stevia and, uh, and non-caloric sweeteners. And then the sugar industry figured out they had to beat this politically because they weren't selling uh, uh, sugar anymore. And a matter of fact, uh, through generally regarded as safe laws, which Congress passed, uh, they managed uh, to uh, falsely tell, tell the Food and Drug Administration uh, and the National Institutes of Health, uh, the, 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 go the uh, uh, government, uh, that the sugar substitutes were carcinogenic when they were not. They lied, and that's well summarized in this book. And another book I'll show you in a minute called The Case Against Sugar by Gary Taubes. I'll hold that up for you uh, in, a, in a little bit, okay? Uh, and you do wonder, uh, for example, uh, the government is involved here through the WIC program, WIC uh, uh, program, uh, and they are promoting sugary products to children. Mm -hmm including milk, read a book called Whitewash by Joe Keon about milk. Uh, once you read that, you won't be drinking milk. So the government promotes uh, bad science and it's hurting children. I'll say it, it's the truth. The science is behind me, okay? So we're having a pandemic, which means spread across the world, of children's ob obesity, okay? The largest increase has been age two to six. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going to happen to those kids as they grow up? Are they going to live to be 90? No, they're going to die in their 30s and 40s and 50s, and some even before that. And uh, the World Health Organization, the WHO, has said that obesity rate has doubled in 20 years. Mm -hmm. In 20 years. They think it will double again in the next 10 years, considering all the disability, all the illnesses, because almost everyone is overweight, almost every one of them has diabetes, and they will get the 30 diseases that diabetes causes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the science behind it. Pay, pay attention. Then again, 20, 30% of the people who have normal weight, trophies thin on the outside, but they have fat in their organs, surrounding the, the pancreas and the, and the liver. And that's the fat under the skin that's dangerous. It's the fat that's around your organs that's dangerous. So tw that 20% of the thin people, they also have diabetes and they get the 30 diseases and they're gonna die young or be disabled, be amputated, demented, uh, whatever. This is what diabetes causes. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, and, uh, and when you think about it today, you know, we have a pandemic of the coronavirus 19 going around everywhere and the rates are really going up. And the vaccine for most of us to get will probably way into next year. What could they be doing in the meanwhile? But neither party has mentioned that the virus, I, I've researched as well, the virus does not have its own metabolic system. It, a bacteria in your gut do, okay? But viruses don't. So the virus enters a human cell through the receptor, okay? And, and, and then 
with incomplete DNA, genetic structure, and steals the sugar, the fatty acids which come from sugar, uh, multiplies, enlarges itself, leaves the cell and spreads through your body and maybe the world. Viruses are sugar feeders. So why are we not uh, telling that to the nation and telling people to get rid of their uh, type 2 diabetes, which is associated with many chronic diseases, 30 or 40. We probably have in the world a billion to two billion diabetics. Why are they not telling us? Uh, because you can get rid of the disease. Believe me, I know the science. Six to eight weeks, 90% of the people uh, could get rid of their diabetes, their sugar out of the, We need a little bit of sugar in the cell, the majority of sugar out of the cells that lead a normal life. Why are they not doing that? I do not know. But I'm saying it. Uh, uh, and uh, they figure about 20, 30, 65 percent of the people will be uh, overweight. Obesity doesn't kill people, but it's the abnormal metabolism occurring in their organs in the body that kills people. Okay, uh, and, uh, and and it's a fat around our organs, around the liver, around the mesentery, around the pancreas that causes the abnormality. It's not the subcutaneous fat, so you can be overweight maybe 20% overweight and have no medical problem, okay? But it has to be under the skin, only 20% of okay, okay? Uh, so how long, how long have people been overweight in, in history? Actually, they can go, they have found a little statuette that was put together 24,000 BC, BC, 24,000 years BC, they found it. Uh, uh, and uh, there's a picture of it in, in uh, Gary Taub's book or Dr. Lustig's uh, uh, book, and, and, and this statuette clearly uh, very overweight. And it's in a, it's in a museum, I think, in, uh, in England, I, in Egypt. I think it's in Egypt. So, uh, uh, so who, who is sitting uh, at the table? Uh, a blame for what's occurring in this country. For one thing, 50 years, they told us that fat was the problem. Mm -hmm. It was sugar. And it was promoted by industry, the government, the medical profession. I accept responsibility because we knew better. We knew better, but I've known this for years, okay? So I wouldn't say I'm one of them. Although before that, I, uh, you know, I didn't brush my teeth every day when I, I was even in college. There's a mistake for you, okay? And uh, so gluttony and sloth that we seek sugar, we're at the table, and then uh, if we eat too much uh, sugar, uh, eventually hormonally, hormones run our body, deposit in the fat cells, and we get bigger and we're not moving and exercising. So. We are partly responsible, but we base our decisions partly uh, on uh, improper teaching, say in the schools, okay, public health. They could be teaching little children uh, uh, and not selling soda pop or sugary foods, which they still do. And the government does, the WIC program does, uh, uh, is giving, giving away free uh, bad food uh, and milk. Once you read that book I told you about, you won't be drinking milk from a cow. You might from, from peas or almonds or something like that, which is, which is um, uh, fine. Uh, so uh, on the average, a woman today compared to 10 years ago is consuming about 187 calories more, but me, uh, a woman is consuming 335 calories more and men about 187 calories more per day. So that leads to, to obviously to, to, to health problems, okay? Uh, one problem has been for a long time is that the health industry, they're getting a little better at it, wouldn't pay uh, for uh, treating someone's overweight from the diseases or just for a coach to help you get to normal weight. Yeah, they wouldn't do that themselves. They said, that's your problem, we're not responsible. 
Well, that was a bad mistake because uh, uh, the things that we eat change the hormones in our body and we may not have control of it. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll go through the chemistry of that in a little bit, okay? Uh, the uh, medical industry says uh, it's not a hormonal metabolic problem. Uh, it's because you, you eat it because it makes you feel good. It's like a cigarette or uh, alcohol. Uh, again, uh, incorrect because indeed it, it is the 50 ho hormones in our body and interacting with each other and make us feel that way. It's very difficult to control. Sugar is addictive. Some people think it's more addictive than cocaine. I debated some, debated somebody on TV one time about it, and I think right at this table here. Yeah, uh, and I think I lost the debate uh, because I, I think sugar uh, uh, hits our hedonic, hedonic pathway in our brain, releases dopamine and serotonin. And you eat that donut, I'm in heaven. And believe me, if tonight, and I have generally good health habits, but if tonight I does a, a piece of pie or donut lay in there, before I go to bed, I guarantee you 100% I will be eating it. It's hormonally dependent. By that time, I sh should be a little bit stressed out from having done a lot of things. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so... Uh, then we have the obesity profiteers. They're making a lot of money on, on keeping you sick, okay? From operations to clinics to injections to the processed food industry where they stripped uh, all the fiber off the food. And uh, when they said, oh, fat was bad, what did they do? Substituted sugar and bad fats. And our bad fats are addictive uh, and, and sugar and, then the fast food industry spread across the country and then through the world. Through the world, China had very little problems uh, with diabetes. Uh, our fast food businesses spread throughout the country and now they have the highest number of diabetics in the world. Not the number, highest number per person, which we have the highest number because they're a nation uh, of almost two billion people, okay? They got a good billion uh, people there that uh, have diabetes. They're gonna have chronic diseases. They're gonna uh, die younger. Um, very interesting. So uh, some would say now we're not exercising as much as we used to, and I think it's true, but I'd exercise has maybe 20% to do. You cannot exercise enough to burn off calories enough uh, to, to uh, lose weight because your body realizes they're trying to starve me. You know what happens? Is it then drops its basic metabolic rate. Yeah, it drops down. So you lose weight for a while and then it stops and then it goes higher and you end up more weight than you had before. That's true. Uh, th that, that is true. And uh, so the commercial food industry is making a fortune, as well as the lobbyists in Congress. Sugar organizations have been formed by, by uh, industry, and there's been some dishonesty going at it, just like there had been in the cigarette industry. Uh, but they caught them there, and, and, and some people were prosecuted. So cigarette smoking is a bit, a bit less. And, uh, but I'll be telling you a little bit later, and I'll tell you a little bit now. There's sugar in cigarettes. Yeah. When they could only addict about 10, 15% of the people around 1910, uh, they found that if they took tobacco that was cured, you know, you heat it, uh, uh, and the Kentucky, the Burley uh, tobacco, you know what they do after it's dried after a few days? They soak it in molasses and honey. And now it's 40% or so sugar. Why? Because smoke is alkaline. You can only breathe in so much of the smoke if you inhale. 
and you start coughing like anything. That's the reason probably why I didn't smoke as a high school kid. I tried it once, one cigarette, I couldn't stop coughing for a day, and that was the end for me, thank God, okay? But if they added sugar to the cigarettes, mm -hmm. I think it's a teaspoonful almost in every cigarette. Mm -hmm. that, makes, that makes the air acidic. When it's acidic, it opens the alveoli up, the pouches uh, in, in your lung, and then opens the way, opens the door to your blood to let nicotine in, which is more addictive, and the nasty chemicals. They found out they could sell twice as many cigarettes. That's well described in Gary Taub's book, a whole chapter. You can Google it too, sugar and cigarettes, and read it. That came out again recently. I knew it a long time before that. And, uh, but this is just additional information uh, for, uh, for you. Uh, and uh, so we can become addicted to the type of food that we eat. Yeah. Uh, it can be as addictive as, morph as morphine or marijuana. Yeah, marijuana, uh, people who smoke marijuana a lot of times uh, develop the munchies because it turns off uh, their appetite control system uh, and they will eat much more than usual and get a pot belly. And then, of course, they're diabetic. Mm -hmm. Marijuana does that especially to children, especially to children. Be aware of that. Uh, and uh, so uh, a lot of hormones in our body control our appetite, turn it on and off. And uh, so behaviors can be driven by hormones. The hypothalamus, which is a control center, okay, uh, just above the pituitary uh, controls, turns appetite on and off. Uh, uh, it controls heat and cold, for example. It, it is a control center. And above that is the limbic system, which is a lot of emotional uh, uh, influences. Okay, so uh, insulin is the cell storage hormone. Okay, it's what insulin, which drives sugar into the cell for energy. Uh, that uh, opens the fat cells and lets sugar in. A lot of diabetics take insulin or metformin. But let me tell you, you take the insulin, it takes the, the sugar and puts it into the cell. The cell was this big. But once you fill it full of sugar to get the blood sugar to normal, guess what happens to the cell? And guess what's happened to you? You get fat. People who are insulin for diabetes, generally overweight. That's just shifting the problem and even making it worse. Mm -hmm. You need to study that. So we can get rid of diabetes, which I teach a lot. Look at my YouTube shows. Uh, and I see people for three at the Three Rivers Pharmacy every Friday. Uh, to, to do that, you might consider that. Instead of just stuffing your cells full of sugar, and, and, and metformin is doing, metformin uh, tells the cell you're hungry and invites sugar in. It acts a bit differently, but they're both, you need to read about that. There's a, a, a book uh, by uh, a PhD named Leland, L-E-L-A-N-D. Uh, you can see it on my uh, TV shows. Uh, a good book to read, it helps you get rid of of diabetes, 90 days. I think it could be sooner than that, okay? So that's important. Let's review biochemistry a little further. Um, when you eat something, okay, some of it's digested in your mouth, but then it gets in the stomach, and, and uh, there are acids there which help digest it, and then it goes to the small intestine. Carbohydrates and protein uh, is... Uh, and digested further by your friends, the bacteria. Your life is what you eat is digested by bacteria. You get in here about a trillion living little things. 
Mm -hmm. They're bigger than viruses. They have their own metabolic system. Uh, but carbohydrates and protein are sent uh, uh, to the liver, uh, and then uh, uh, further metabolism uh, occurs. Messages are sent to the brain, whether you're eating too much or, or, or too little. Uh, and fat that you ate is, is partially broken down, uh, and then goes through the lymphatic system uh, through a different system, and then uh, works its way into the blood system. Eventually, if you eat too much of it, it'll be stored in, in the liver. Uh, some converted to glycogen, uh, which you can use for quick energy. But there's only so much glycogen in your liver, 100 grams. Okay, muscle is 400 grams, and the rest gets converted uh, to fat. So insulin, uh, and then eventually the pancreas reads the amount of sugar there is, and it determines whether it secretes insulin to decrease it or glucagon to increase your blood sugar. Okay, just to give you some idea of the hormones. Don't mean to get too complicated here. And uh, so insulin is a fat storage hormone made uh, by uh, the uh, pancreas discovered around 1922 or so, they purified it, uh, and they gave it to type 1 diabetics who don't make insulin. It, sa it clearly saved a lot of lives, uh, but there's problems with it because insulin does other things, stiffens the arteries, uh, uh, increased rates of cancer, insulin growth factors. Uh, it, it, it does a lot of other things uh, besides put insulin into the cell, okay? So there's no energy storage without insulin. It opens, the, it, it lets the fat get into the cell to form triglycerides. That's why we get a blood test where we check triglycerides, uh, okay? Uh, so we burn what we eat, depends how much you're moving, okay? And we store the rest, okay? Uh, and the fat in your, Fat cells is largely, 80% is triglycerides, okay? But the message system really starts on the hypothalamus that we uh, talked about, uh, where uh, involved uh, the vagus nerve, which is a storage hormone, the sympathetic nervous system, uh, uh, which, which helps regulate your leptin system, uh, which uh, insulin and leptin are competing against each other at the fat uh, cell level, and, uh, and, and uh, leptin works uh, at the muscular cell level. So that determines between the vagus nerve and the sympathetic nervous system, and the leptin determines uh, what your appetite is. Are you hungry? Uh, uh, are you f full? They're all interrelated. So, okay. The VMH, the, the central, the ventral medial hypothalamus. Remember, I said that hypothalamus has a lot of control centers in it. it is the holy grail of leptin, of leptin. Okay, and uh, uh, when they discovered leptin, Amgen, the drug company, thought there was the answer to the epi ep the obesity epidemic. Didn't turn out for them. They lost all kind of money, and gave up on it. And uh, so, but, but some people are leptin resistant or insulin resistant, so the interrelationship of the hormones doesn't work. Uh, but, but it is the key to the obesity epidemic is, is uh, leptin uh, resistant. Uh, leptin correlates with the amount of body fat, so you can check the leptin level and determine the amount of body fat that you have, okay? Of the people who are addicted to food, 30% uh, eating a lot of fast food, okay? Uh, and, and while they're eating it, it's cheap. It makes them feel good, okay? It has a lot of sugar and bad fats in it. They affect your hormone system, and I'm never satisfied. I just keep on eating. I can't stop uh, uh, eating the uh, fast food. And now that's, you know, it's all over the world. And that's why we have this pandemic of diabetes, obesity, all over the world, all over the world. And um, uh, so in food, it uses the hedonic pathway of your brain, okay? Uh, uh, the same thing that cigarettes, alcohol, narcotics do. Same pathway. They secrete dopamine, I'm in heaven. 
serotonin, uh, which lasts, you know, you might last for a few hours where you feel good, okay? I have a cup of coffee in the morning, uh, and, and I feel <laughs> a lot better <laughs> after waking up. Uh, and I suspect a little dopamine is secreted. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's my narcotic, okay? Been, but it's not addictive exactly. So uh, it seems to be, at least I'm thinking, it seems to be fairly safe. Not six cups, but, you know, a, a, a cup of them uh, gets me going, uh, okay? Uh, but food uses a hedonic pathway across the world. That's why we're having this these huge epidemic. Uh, and the dopamine, uh, which, you know, the size of the center of the brain that makes dopamine, that stores dopamine, a millimeter. A millimeter, yeah. But you can get it going quick, dance a little, laugh a little, have a cigarette, uh, have a little alcohol, eat a little sugar, it lights up. And they've studied it now. Uh, with MRI scans, um, functional MRIs, where uh, sugar, uh, they can use sugar that lights these up. Mm -hmm. uh, the functional, functional MRIs. Uh, and uh, so they've, uh, they're, they're proving it, uh, okay? Uh, and uh, obesity is a re related a lot to leptin resistance, okay? If you had normal leptin, you'd be turning the appetite off at the hypothalamic level, but you can't. Uh, so obesity is leptin resistance, leptin resistance. It's not working, it's not functioning, okay? Uh, uh, it's insulin's job to clear the dopamine from the synapse. You know, when we have an axon or dendrite up there, uh, our nerves, uh, uh, it's insulin's job to get the dopamine out of there uh, uh, and uh, if you have insulin resistance, it can't do, can't do its job, okay? Uh, and uh, so uh, the American Psy Psychiatric Association uh, developed seven criteria to determine if you might be addicted or not. Uh, fat, salt, and sugar. They, they, they all can do that, bad fats, remember what I said? If you have three of those seven, um, they think maybe you're addicted or dependent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and what are the seven criteria? Whether you've developed tolerance, whether you tolerate it uh, well, or if you don't eat it, uh, do you emotionally pick up on it that you're not eat eating the stuff that's making you feel good? Are you binging it? Are you hiding donuts? Are you hiding uh, bad foods, hiding the cigarettes or marijuana or whatever? And that's binging. Uh, do you have a desire to quit? Number four. Okay, you feel, I'm tired of it. This is causing me uh, problems. Are you craving the food? You can't just wait till you uh, eat uh, sugary foods, alcohol, c cigarettes, marijuana. Uh, is it interfering with your life? Number six, you know, you're losing your job, uh, your family, your kids, things are being infected, um, but you continue doing it despite uh, serious consequences. So, so the seven, if you have three of those, uh, you could be dependent, addicted to whatever, cigarettes, marijuana, sugar eating, mm -hmm those seven criteria which I just went through. Uh, so um, uh, eating a lot of sugar, high salt food, and, and bad fats, the omega-6 fats, omega-3 fats, are good fats, guacamole, uh, olives, uh, for example, I had a guacamole toast this morning, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a good fat, okay. But bad fats can be Addictive because oxidative stress can make you sick. Uh, uh, so, but then the industry saw this happening to them. Uh, they, like I said, they started making sodas uh, with sugar substitutes. Okay, uh, but then they, then they said bad things about them. Did everything they could uh, 
influenced the Congress, uh, said it would cause cancer because sugar was was selling so cheap, they were losing money. So our government, in essence, has fixed the price of sugar now. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't reach a certain level, the government hands over money. And that's why the sugar farmers in the islands around us, those guys are very rich because the price of sugar is fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 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 drinking a soda with sugar in it with fast food increases uh, bad food. you seeking it 10 times. Mm -hmm. Sugary drinks are, are evil. And uh, uh, coffee, uh, and that is bad. Okay? But you notice if you go to some of the coffee businesses around town, and I Till the virus said, I used to sit in one, read my books, and have plain coffee. I never ordered their blended coffees uh, with all types of sugary products. And what I saw walking out of Starbucks right by me because I sat by the door, uh, usually uh, I could see the drinks. Uh, and they would even add, I, I saw them adding sugar to it and whipped cream to it. Uh, usually, the drinks they walk out with, I could see in that the order matched their body shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even saw one of the CEOs, one of the hospitals in town here, walk out with six of those. And I saw him take the sugar thing and add it and add it and add it. And he's a CEO of a hospital and doesn't look too healthy. I'm not being critical, but, but you got to exemplify, I think, a little bit uh, what you're doing, or at least you might question the advice that they're handing out. Okay, I think the hospital industry, us doctors, should lead the way. If the doctor looks unhealthy, I, I, I think it's a problem. How's the patient going to change? Because the patient's uh, eating, eating the sugar. I'm in heaven. So to change that person, You've got to see them back frequently and talk to them psychologically. I'm not putting blame on the patient. I'm putting blame on our teaching of what to eat uh, and how to get over the problem. Okay? It can be done. I've taken an advanced stage kidney disease patient, got rid of his diabetes, and now their kidney function is improving. Yeah. I'm really proud of that. I noticed that she all of a sudden is wearing nice clothes, got, got lipstick on, got earrings on. This lady that looked so depressed, looked like she's going to need a new kidney. I've turned it around. I hope I can duplicate it a million times, but it's working right now. Uh, and and uh, so uh, what Dr. Lustig will write about uh, is that sucrose, okay, is half glucose and half fructose. And what the Japanese invented, this enzyme to take corn with an enzyme, they convert it to glucose and fructose. The glucose enters the blood system, insulin level goes up. Is it used up or it's stored? But fructose is not used up right away and goes to the liver uh, and makes fat in the liver. That's what fructose does. So you can see the uh, 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 problem with that, okay? And uh, the uh, enzyme the Japanese invented to make fructose corn syrup, uh, and then the government supports the price of fructose. Yeah, mm -hmm. helps make people sick. I would think that would violate the grass laws. Okay, so every successful diet restricts sugar. It's the Lex Luthor. Okay, it's the fructose that makes that makes it sweet. Okay. So fructose causes metabolic disease uh, that changes the chemistry in your body, which is what uh, leads to uh, uh, being overweight. But I tell you, diabetes is the cause of obesity, of, of blindness, of part of d dementia, heart disease, thyroid disease, amputations, dislocations, skin diseases, 
I can go on and on, okay? That's what that uh, does. Uh, and uh, in um, America, you know, at the moment, we're eating probably 130, 150 pounds of sh sugar. It's actually increased more than that. Some, it's two, two or 300 pounds uh, uh, even. Uh, and uh, uh, if you uh, drink one of these sugary drinks, 50% uh, of the people drink one can a day, 5% four sugary drinks a day, okay? And uh, so some adolescents, 40% uh, have uh, overweight, if properly tested, would have diabetes. I always recommend they have a serum insulin test because insulin is what pushes sugar into the cell for energy. The sugar may remain normal for a long time. Oh, you're not a diabetic, although you weigh 200 pounds. Wrong. You got diabetes. Get a serum insulin test. So you go to a doctor, tell him you want a glucose tolerance test and an insulin tolerance test. It will catch you 20 years on the path to diabetes. You'll be healthy. Live to be 100. See you at my next pickleball match. <laughs> okay. So serum insulins, I want you to learn about that. Uh, uh, and uh, you can go online, put in Robert Kraft, K-R-A-F-T. Uh, he's speaking on YouTube. He also wrote a book. See if you can get a hold of that book. Real easy to read. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so some adolescents are quite sick. The, the Pediatric Association uh, in the state, I went there, I went to the head of it and ask him to change uh, testing mechanisms uh, for uh, children to, to get serum insulin tests, but he is essentially refused. To me, to me, a big mistake. We could be catching people on the way to obesity and diabetes, avoid the whole thing. Ain't gonna happen until we just keep on bringing it up. That's why I'm here today. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so America is sugar dipped and sugar coated, even when you save a piece of chicken, okay? Uh, and it's coated in something odd, so it's a sugary product to make it uh, feel, uh, taste good, okay? And uh, so the world sugar consumption has probably tripled in the last 20 years. Uh, and uh, the reason fruit, and you don't worry too much about the fructose, it has fiber in it. And as long as it has fiber in it, it that's complex sugars which are not digested and they pass out in the stool uh, that you can get away with generally eating qu quite a bit of fruit, okay? And, uh, but some fruits are a little higher in sugar than others and you can check something called the glycemic index and you can uh, learn a bit more about it. But 33% but, uh, uh, of the sugary juices are consumed uh, by the poor and the underserved uh, because they put them in the schools. They're cheap, they're at the gas stations, uh, and we need to educate people to avoid those, uh, okay? And uh, so, uh, uh, Fructose worsens what's called the Maillard reaction, the browning that you see. You know, they see a browning covering some, some foods you think are healthy, but they have this brown crust. That's fructose, unhealthy. So what seems like you're having a, a piece of healthy meat, and not for meat seven days a week, but a couple of days a week, no problem, okay? Uh, a good example, too, is if you get blood sugar, check an HbA1c. That's a browning of your hemoglobin. And it's a uh, it's three months' worth of sugar. And it's a good test to see where you're at. Okay, I had a physical recently did that. But if you want to catch your path to diabetes 10, 15 years back, get a serum insulin, okay? 30 or less uh, would be uh, a normal. Fasting should be less than five, okay? Uh, but 
if you can't afford it, uh, insurance in this state, Medicaid, I think will even pay for it. If you can't afford it, you can go to uh, any test, DuPont next to Walgreens, 100 bucks for glucose tolerance and insulin tolerance. I negotiate the price. That's pretty cheap compared to the hospitals. They charge a lot more. Uh, but then you know where you're really at. To wait till you get a disease, some of times can be undone, but it's a lot better to avoid the disease, uh, okay? And uh, there's been a clear correlation that, you know, you hear about Alzheimer's disease, or we can't help it, it comes along, and, and the Alzheimer's Association collects a lot of money, but never tell you about prevention. But I'm telling you, a good 50, 70% of Alzheimer's disease uh, is to insulin tolerance in your brain cells. So if you don't have the path to diabetes or diabetes, you won't get dementia. Yeah. Anybody ever tell you that? The Alzheimer's Association ever had an ad on TV or told you that? No, all they want to do is collect money, send it for genetic research, when the reality is, is do the metabolism in your body, and I'm teaching you how not to get it. That's a big thing. Look at some of my... YouTube shows and, and YouTube, Rudy really Cashman, uh, Alzheimer's disease. I get one out TV shows, 500 maybe, all on health. Mm -hmm. And I thank Public Access TV, where I am today, for giving me opportunity to do these talks, which I have for maybe 15 years or so. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the African Americans and Latin Americans are the biggest consumers of high fructose corn syrup, one of these books says, and, 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 and they have higher dementia rates. Mm -hmm. Well studied. I read a book on dementia. It mentioned that outside of Los Angeles. This doctor was saying he could hardly meet somebody of that ethnic group or racial group past age 65 that did not have an aspect of dementia outside of LA. He said so, right in his book. So don't be in denial. Uh, get the testing done, and then get on the path to get rid of it. Get rid of it, okay? And uh, uh, so alcohol uh, will uh, all also increase your visceral fat. Remember I said that's the dangerous fat, okay? Uh, uh, and uh, the effects on the body really are, the, are essentially the same as sugar. Uh, and so alcohol... Uh, should be limited. They used to say you can have a three glasses of wine a week, but I read the latest literature, it says all alcohol assumes some risk. I've always enjoyed a glass of wine, but I'm frankly down to one every two weeks <laughs> when I feel I need it, okay? But keep that in mind, okay? So uh, uh, alcohol is different from sugar in the sense that it has an intoxicating effect, but sugar, sugar uh, can too. Uh, so the brain doesn't metabolize fructose, uh, and, and it is the primary cause of metabolic disease. Uh, and uh, so sugar flies under the radar. We talk about alcohol, but we're not talking about so much sugar. It needs to be up front. It is the cause of 90% of our health problems, and you can avoid them by eating the right food. No diet, you know what I mean? Mild to moderate carbs, reasonable protein. Learn what good fats are. The secret is, what are good fats? Uh, and Mark Hyman wrote a book. Uh, 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 and, and, and here's on that, and Robert Lustig uh, on his cover says, fat chance. So, here, he's speaking about it, okay? So a lot of literature standing behind me. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Malaysia have the highest rate of type 2 diabetes, and largely due to soft drinks they're drinking, because mm -hmm. they don't, their religion does not allow alcohol, although some obviously do, but, but it's not a pandemic like in this country. Uh, and, uh, this case against sugar by Gary Taubes, which I'll hold up for you here, uh, I highly recommend uh, that you read that. Uh, when you have a chance, 
you know. And, uh, and you may have heard of The Case Against Sugar by Gary Taubes, because for 50 years they told us it was the fat. Mm -hmm. yeah. The government, doctors, all the time, it, the bad fats turns out, turns out if you eat good, if you're eating uh, good fats, then the sugar goes down, the insulin goes down, and because the insulin is going down, the fat cells open up, lets its fat out, goes to the blood, joins albumin, goes to the liver, makes ketones, and you're living off ketones full of uh, energy, okay? Your appetite uh, will go down. Uh, and, uh, and like I mentioned, I encourage you uh, I really spoke about sugar in cigarettes. I think you understand that now. Uh, and that's when children uh, are smoking these e-cigarettes uh, and, and they get some as candy and stuff. What do you think they're doing? Addicting kids to sugar and nicotine and letting bad chemicals in. So watch your kid. So what am I saying? Public health has been a failure. The government has been a failure. We in the medical community have been a failure. But I'm ringing the bell. I'm ringing the bell. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much for watching this show. You can see me on YouTube, 95.7 FM radio show. See me at the pharmacy for free. I'll personally teach you uh, uh, things to eat and not to eat. No diet. It's simple. Uh, and uh, you'll be healthy and you'll live to be 100 and you'll play pickleball and tennis with me and maybe even tap dance like I do almost every day. We love you. Thanks for watching the show.